This morning, I would like to clarify a statement that was made, that made headlines in the Daily Herald newspaper today, Wednesday, March the 30th. The headline said, JetBlue not stopping service to St. Martin. JetBlue is indeed dropping its daily San Juan St. Martin route due to underperformance of this route. The service will cease as of May the 3rd, and JetBlue did indeed announce this service cancellation. However, I must state that JetBlue's other services, the JFK Boston service, did not cease their operation. The airline will continue these two services and presently are conducting its due diligence considering in the introduction of its mint service, which is being offered to the other Caribbean destinations on the JFK St. Martin route, which is presently flying to St. Martin. The airline mint service includes the top-notch stylish seats with the option of massage, special check-ins, early boarding, non-stop entertainment on board, menus, complimentary board fly service, Wi-Fi, and this service which is being offered to the other Caribbean destinations. We are exploring the uh, possibility of offering this service as well on the JFK St. Martin route, which will enhance the experience of these customers coming to the island. JetBlue is presently conducting their due diligence, and we, this ministry, together with the Tourist Bureau and the stakeholders, are conducting our due diligence as well to see if this service is profitable and for us to continue to service the route that is presently flying from the JFK to St. Martin. Uh, I had a meeting with, the, with Mr. Dave Clark. He's the Vice President Network Planning on March the 23rd to explore the possibility of servicing the St. Martin Fort Lauderdale route. This request was accepted with great interest and Mr. Clark has invited us for an in-person meeting where we can further discuss the options and possibilities of exploring this route together with the airport and the stakeholders. So I must say that we are in conversation with JetBlue. We do have the service and we are looking at other options in getting the Fort Lauderdale St. Martin service as well in operation. I feel like I've been away for quite a while. I don't think it's only been a week, but it feels like a long time. So even though we've had some press releases going out this week already, um, I do have some new information specifically from the Department of Culture regarding a cultural heritage essay contest registration, which is ongoing. The Department of Culture within the ministry through the 2013-23 Decade of Revitalizing Our Natural and Cultural Heritage Campaign officially launched the first interscholastic essay competition on intangible heritage amongst St. Martin Secondary School juniors and seniors, so that of, those are from forms three to five or nine to 12, under the age of 19, as well as pre-university students who are also eligible to participate. The registration is ongoing, and the last day for submission is Friday, April 22nd. As St. Martin is an associate member of the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, known as UNESCO, and has recognized that the United Nations has declared 215 to 24, the International Decade of People of African Descent, the topic of the essay competition in keeping with that theme of recognition, justice, and development is to describe the global impact of people of African descent from your perspective. The department aims to encourage and reward young students in various aspects of culture and the arts, for example, in the field of literary arts and promote St. Martin's natural and cultural heritage via strategic initiatives and special projects that are in line with the wider governing program. The ministry year plan as well as the department cultural policy framework so i encourage our young writers out there to take this opportunity to take part in this essay contest also the department talent scholarship policy is being executed uh, the department is busy developing the policy however um, 
scholarships for talent has been awarded in the past. As a matter of fact, it is a short-term scholarship that provides students in the field of arts the opportunity to enhance their skills in the disciplines such as dance, acting, vocal training, etc. It ensures the students between the age of 15 and 28 that are, um, would like the opportunity to apply for a talent scholarship of which two scholarships will be granted annually. Um, into 14 and 15, a total of nine such scholarships were granted. So during those two years, past recipients of these scholarship programs are Ms. Francia Adamas, Ms. Leanne Borsha, Mr. Delaney Antoine, Ms. Natori Illich, Mr. Jabari York, Ms. Bianca Dykoff. Currently, three students are currently abroad. Uh, sorry. Three students are currently abroad completing their programs, namely Mr. Fernando van der Kratz, Mr. Giovanni Webster, and Ms. Tyra Els, with the help of the funding they've received from the talent scholarships. The ministry would also like to announce that the official release of the talent scholarship and application procedures will be made public in the near future so that others can apply. Should you have any questions, do contact the Department of Culture at 542-2056. Also on the Cultural Department agenda is the remeasurement and redelineation of boundaries and buffer zones of registered monuments. The ministry, as the minister is a gatekeeper of the country's patrimony and as such keeps a public register of protected monuments. The ministry is currently busy with the remeasuring of the national registered monuments whereby each monument that is designated as such will receive a cadastral deed allowing the owner of the property with the option of developing the other parts of the property which is not designated as a registered monument. This is a major shift from the existing situation where the property owners hands were tied because the entire property was designated as a monument and therefore they could do nothing else to develop their property. In February of this year, the remeasurement project and redelineation of the boundaries and the buffer zones of the registered monument started and is currently ongoing. The Department of Culture continues to seek the cooperation of property owners and the general public in cooperation with carrying out this very important project. Also, in a minor update, the ministry continues to do all that is necessary to collaborate within the ministry as well as to all, with st all stakeholders involved to find viable solutions for the ongoing concerns faced by public schools, as well as, I'm sure many read the newspapers this morning, the initiative was brought about via many interventions, and I must thank the Prime Minister in being able to secure that meeting with the school bus owners. Um, prior to that, it was the intention of the ministry to host um, open dialogue with the bus drivers, but it was brought across as if they had been ongoing and that the bus drivers were aware. So seeing that we were negligent in informing them in a timely manner, we did host them in a meeting last evening, the School Bus Owners Association. Um, an entire, the majority of the board, seven members were present and they were able to bring across their views, their concerns um, along the entire spectrum. The ministry was also well represented and were able to explain the reasoning behind of trying to bring regulation to something that has been going um, ad hoc, basically, for many, many, many years. The school bus owners also reiterated that they have been in several meetings with different ministries, as many know, the Ministry of TIAT um, were the ones that initially dealing with the school buses, but the budget always came from the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sports. So back in 2013, during my first tenure, it was brought to my attention then, and we saw to put the responsibility where it should be uh, in terms of who's paying should be responsible, yet that proper collaboration never really happened, and so therefore at times the association was meeting with the Ministry of TIAT, at other times meeting with different persons within the Ministry of Education, and there was not enough synchronization going on. However, I have promised the School Bus Owners Association that dialogue will remain open between us, between the ministries, as well as between um, the government and them, so we will have a united front in dealing with them, and, but that it is inevitable that we bring some regulation to this as this is something that falls directly under the ministry's um, responsibility. Not only that, 
we are held accountable as ministers for the funds that we expend. And up to now, funds are being expended without any types of contracts and the like, which then the minister can be held liable for. So I do not want to leave myself open for any type of personal liability where that is concerned. Um, it should not be the case, especially since 10, 10, 10. We should have regulated this a long time ago. And so for that, as a sitting minister now, I will take responsibility for the government in that, but we cannot shirk our responsibilities in bringing regulations. It is, and I reiterate once more, not the intention of government to take the bread out of anybody's mouths. But we must be very realistic. Education, culture, youth, and sports, while it has a vast chunk of the budget, it must be spent in a proper manner. And every taxpayer would like to know that their tax dollars, gillers, are going towards a proper execution of the services that government has to pay for. And if we are overpaying for busing and we cannot provide the services on the education level, then we are doing an injustice to the students of St. Martin, and therefore we must find ways to regulate this. So that is the only reason, that is a premise upon which this is based. And I'm really hoping that those who have in the past profited erroneously would understand that this cannot continue to happen. So we do not aim to punish anyone, but um, what they explained yesterday is, um, yes, it would change in terms of the funding. They wanted to see um, that they have not received a pay raise in the longest of while, but as they continue to add buses to their fleet, they continue to make money. So whether the buses were filled or not, can we continue to maintain such, a, maintain such a thing with no controls? No. Everybody agrees, and so therefore moving forward, we expect that we will remain mature in our discussions. Uh, the terms of reference are available today, and the association did say that they would pick up. Um, the other uh, drivers who were not in the meeting can also pick up a copy, so it is not closed. There was some concern from them in terms of their protection, in terms of closing it from outsiders. Um, one thing we were able to assure them of that no one person or one entity or someone with deep pockets could come and propose to take over the entire thing. That is totally impossible based on the criteria we've set forth. And the way it is being proposed is to encourage collaboration and cooperation between the operators. So this is an opportune moment for them and for us as locals, because when I went down to the buses yesterday morning, one of them said to me, and I quote, look around, we're all locals here. And I want to reiterate that yes, we are all locals here, but this is a prime opportunity for us as locals now to show that we can work together. Thank you. That the Lionel Corner School have decided to change their uniform, I think especially their shirts. And parents who were able to buy their uniform from the various stores for a lower price, like $8 or $10, today have to settle to buy the uniform from one particular person, and that person is selling the shirts, one shirt, between $12 and $18, depending on the size. I mean, our economy is bad. People are bawling. Can you explain why this change? Um, thanks for the question. Um, I was unaware of what the prices were of the new uniforms. I do. I was made aware that the uniform would change. As many know, the Charles Leopold Bell School and Leonard Connor School merged during this school year, 2015-16. And as such, if you visited the school, you would see children in two different uniforms. So I believe that the school's management made a decision to make it all uniform and not choose for either one or the other as the case may be. I haven't actually visited since they've changed the uniform, so I'm not even sure what the new uniform is. But I've seen over the past year several schools going over to changing their school's uniforms and I've never been involved as minister in that decision. Those are decisions taken at the management level. And so I, based on the information you gave me now, will be able to look into it to see what procedures have been followed, etc. But that is totally something in my quest to do a lot of the, I believe it is imperative that you do empower schools to be able to work independently. So this is not something that I would want to, to tread on their toes with. Um, I remember being as a member of the PTA of the Milton Peters College back when uniforms changed at that time too. Uh, there were many concerns, um, especially from 
the, the store that was providing the uniforms at the time. You're going to lose out. Who's going to buy the stock that I have left, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. With change, there is always a shakeup, and so I don't know the details of this particular shakeup, but I will be looking into it. Thank you, Minister Jacob. I now turn to Minister Arundel, and uh, Minister Arundel. I believe it was the last press briefing you were here when you mentioned about the JetBlue um, thinking about dropping their Sangwang route. Um, you gave uh, an explanation as to what allowed you in person to decrease the price of gas. Um, I remember clearly, and I have you on the record, explaining how you managed to do it and how many years it was not decreased and so forth. Today, we have at least one member of parliament that is aggravated, if I should say that, uh, because of the increase um, of gas. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit again what allowed you to decrease the price of gas back then and what is the current situation as to why gas has increased now? Yeah, I did explain the last time that uh, the minister can increase. However, the increases are based on the prices on the oil market. The Department of Economic Affairs constantly check the prices and with the plat system, they calculate what price should be issued. So if the barrel price is a certain amount, the price for the, the oil is calculated based on the revenues, the statements. A lot of things are being taken into consideration while making up these prices. Because oil is a government controlled commodity mm -hmm. and therefore the Ministry of Economic Affairs controls that. It's not so that they just give a price, but there's a lot of research being done on the market with the oil prices as well as based on what the suppliers have. And based on that, they will calculate what the price will be. Um, I, have, um, I will let someone from the department itself come and explain exactly how it's been done, because that's their expertise. And then the public will know exactly how this is being done. So actually, it's not something that I decide, but it's based, as I said, on the prices on the oil market, when it goes up or it goes down, we just adjust the prices accordingly. Um, another question. Um, most recently, we had um, some uh, tenants that are um, utilizing the cargo facilities at the airport says that the goalpost is constantly being moved. Um, and they are not at all happy with what's going on at the airport. Are you aware about the, the situation? Were you updated? And, is, and can you give for the explanation as to why the cargo building, you know, uh, they're having so much problems? And what status are we with the FBO building? Yeah, actually, I'm not aware of the situation of the cargo. I will definitely look into that. The situation with the FBO as well, it's very unclear to us. We're trying to find out what the situation is exactly, and that's the problem that we're we having with the airport. But definitely we are looking into the situation there, but things have to happen. And we are here to make things better, not to make it worse. So if there's any problems, we are definitely going to look into it. Thank you very much for your questions. Bibi, Alita Singh, you have the floor. Thank you, Cedric. Uh, Minister Arundel, on the uh, Samaran Tourism Authority, can you give an update on that, where the preparations are, and how soon uh, do you anticipate moving into the old fire station? Actually, the St. Martin Tourist Authority, the foundation has been established. The supervisory board members have been named. Mm -hmm. Next week, we're going to have a meeting with the supervisory board members, where we will uh, nominate, uh, discuss the nomination of uh, interim director, the advertisement will soon go out. Once the supervisory board sits, the bank account is being opened. We have a CRIP number as well. Then the funds that we have within the government for the marketing will be transferred to this uh, authority, and the authority will be the entity that will market St. Martin. Um, the building? The building is part of our capital investment. Presently, we are, the first phase that we are going to do is 
we surface Front Street mm -hmm. so that the carnival can pass smoothly. Mm -hmm. And the term of reference for the building so still needs to be drafted and set up. So we are working with the plans and that has our priority, in fact. Uh, during the budget debate, you also mentioned that uh, the tourism um, information system at the airport would be one of the things, that is one of the things that's your priorities. Can you ex uh, say where that project is at the moment? Yeah, actually the airport has the uh, new border control system that is being implemented, I believe, um, this coming month. And with the new system that is being implemented, the tourist office also can have information with regards to the origin of the visitors, where they come from, and based on that, we can adjust our marketing program and market those destinations that are more profitable to us. Thank you. Alita, thank you very much for your questions. We do have some time remaining. Are there any follow-up questions that the media might have? Yes. Um, Minister Arundel, mm -hmm. what is the status quo with the board of the airport? Uh, because I know a letter was sent and then uh, there was some back and forth. So where are we with the airport and their board? Uh, with the airport board, exactly no. I cannot give any information on that. We are working on dealing with the situation as it is. There's a lot of procedures involved in dealing with that. You just cannot decide to dismiss or remove anyone. There's a procedure to be followed and we are following that procedure. At at the present moment. Um, is there an update with uh, the former, or I should say, yeah. suspended director, Regina Labega? No, that's, there is no update, because the management board and the supervisory board have to deal with that situation. And nothing has been communicated to me to this day. She is still on, uh, on leave of absence mm -hmm. until the end of June, and the situation. <laughs>